Jim, oh, they're come cool. on, Gary. <laughs> we were the good guys, right? Yeah, we're the good guys. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 failed Oscar bait movies of 2020. As a guy with the best clearance rate in the department, work 15 years without a promotion. Maybe I didn't go to the right church. I'm working on it. Work harder. Was it worth it? For this list, we're looking at films that aimed high for Oscar gold, but ultimately got no love from the Academy. We're not saying that these movies are bad, just that they got zero nominations. That means we're leaving off the critically panned Hillbilly Elegy, which could become the first time a performer gets an Oscar and a Razzie for the same performance. I know. I could have done better. What movie do you think should have been nominated for an Oscar? Let us know in the comments. Number 10, The Mauritanian. Whatever you decide, your honor, I can accept it. As we said, a failed Oscar bait movie can still be pretty good. The Mauritanian is an intense, eye-opening exploration of the hell Mahamadou Ald Slahi endured at Guantanamo Bay. Why are you here? No reason in particular. I just didn't want you to be alone. Tahar Rahim scored a Golden Globe nomination for his portrayal of Slahi. The Mauritanian gained more momentum at the BAFTAs, where it received five bids, including Best Film. But this didn't translate into a single Oscar nomination. This is it. This is my life. I spend my time in places like this helping people like you. That's what I do. I don't question my commitment to your case. Jodie Foster is the first performer in almost 45 years to win the Best Supporting Actress Golden Globe and not get in at the Oscars. The last instance was Catherine Ross for 1976's Voyage of the Damned. I remind you of someone. Perhaps your sister? Unfortunately, neither Foster nor her co-star Tahar Rahim could break into the Oscars this year. Number 9, Malcolm and Marie. We move on from a universally accepted good movie to a more divisive one. This hard-hitting relationship drama earned some positive reviews for the powerhouse performances from Zendaya and John David Washington. However, many critics felt that Sam Levinson's ranch-riddled screenplay wasn't on par with his sharp direction. The white guy from Variety loved it. The white guy from IndieWire loved it. The white woman from the LA Times, she, she really loved it. She kept saying that I'm the next Spike Lee. The next Barry Jenkins, the next John Singleton. Even with the mixed reviews, some predicted that the film could still get in for Marcel Rev's atmospheric cinematography. Having recently won a primetime Emmy for her lead performance on Euphoria, Zendaya also seemed to be in a strong position to score her first Oscar nomination. But it's not just about you forgetting to thank me, Malcolm. It's about how you see me and how you view my contribution, not just to this relationship, but to your work. While we're sure the Academy will embrace Zendaya and Washington someday, Malcolm and Marie just wasn't the vehicle to do it. Although it's not without merits, it's no Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf. Number 8, Cherry. Although the Academy has yet to recognize directors Anthony and Joe Russo for their phenomenal work in the MCU, a crime drama like Cherry seemed more Oscar-friendly. One thing about robbing banks is you're mostly robbing women, so the last thing you want to be is rude. Ma'am, it's nothing personal. The film reunites the Russos with Tom Holland, who shows off his dramatic range as a soldier suffering from PTSD and addictive behavior. <laughs> Joe Russo described Holland's performance as Oscar-worthy, and various critics agreed that he shined in the role. Alas, critics took issue with the film's length, pacing, and story. Sometimes a great performance can rise above a film's overall quality, but not even Holland and the power of Apple could raise Cherry's Oscar odds. That's well, not your decision to make. Yes, it is my decision. No, it's not your decision yes, to make. Yes, it is my decision. It's not yes, your it is. it is not your decision to make. Like his Spider-Man co-star Zendaya, Holland has the acting chops to become an Oscar nominee. He just needs a better story. Number seven, Wild Mountain Time. And now we'll hear one from a local beauty, Rosemary Muldoon. 
for Spielock. What's she doing? John Patrick Shanley won a Best Original Screenplay Oscar for Moonstruck, a film about family, unlikely romances and culture. Wild Mountain Time follows a similar formula but shifts the focus from an Italian-American family to an Irish family. That said, the film's first misfire was allowing Christopher Walken to do what many have called a hilariously awful Irish accent. Your mother would die again if she saw the state of this house. Emily Blunt's accent isn't much better. Even Jamie Dornan, who was born in Northern Ireland, sounds like he's doing an over-the-top impression. Laughable accents aside, this adaptation of Shanley's Tony-nominated play was further criticised for its corny tone and ridiculous ending. The film failed to live up to the buzz, despite having a character who thinks he's a honeybee. Yeah, you heard us correctly. Christian Grey thinks he's a bee. Say that again. I believe that I'm a honeybee. Number six, Irresistible. It's good to see you. Yeah. You look fat. <laughs> 2020 was one of the most heated election years in US history. So a political satire like Irresistible seemed tailor-made for the zeitgeist, as well as Oscar voters. The film was written and directed by Jon Stewart, a two-time Oscar host and a 22-time Emmy winner. You really think you can run a campaign that paints him as a carpetbagger? Probably not, but I think I can run one that says you are. With a cast that includes Oscar nominee Steve Carell and Oscar winner Chris Cooper, we all expected the film to live up to its title. The lukewarm reviews proved otherwise, however. Critics generally felt that Stewart's screenplay was behind the times and not nearly as clever as it aspires to be. Oh, on, Carrie. <laughs> we were the good guys, right? Yeah, we're the good guys. When they go low, we go high. Unless we also need to go low, apparently. <laughs> Given the political climate, Irresistible should have been far more daring, kind of like another comedy that did score two Oscar nominations, Borat's subsequent movie film. I go to America! <laughs> Number five, The Glorias. You're Gloria Steinem. This next film is by no means bad. The Glorias as a whole just isn't as trailblazing as its central figure. This year, the press has finally discovered a movement that has already been strong for several years now. The biographical drama is kept afloat thanks to the performances of Julianne Moore, Alicia Vikander, Lulu Wilson and Ryan Kira Armstrong, who portray Gloria Steinem throughout her storied life. Since each actress's screen time is divided, however, there wasn't really a standout to push forward come awards season. The truth will set you free. But first, it will piss you off. The Glorias did make the Oscar shortlist for best makeup and hairstyling. Costume designer Sandy Powell is also an Oscar favorite. But in the end, the Glorias couldn't garner one nomination. And exactly how does that make sense? Number four, The Prom. The rest of the reviews are coming in. <laughs> New York Post, Associated Press, New York Times. The New York Times. Wow. What? Despite being based on a Tony-nominated musical, it was always unlikely that The Prom would follow the same awards trajectory as Best Picture winners like Chicago. Still, Ryan Murphy's film adaptation was a well-produced crowd-pleaser with colourful sets and costumes. And anything starring Meryl Streep is usually taken seriously as an awards contender. OK, I admit that got to me. <laughs> see? See? I'm not a total lost cause. Like the first Mamma Mia, though, the film had to settle for two Golden Globe nominations. The Hollywood Foreign Press Association nominated it for Best Motion Picture, Musical or Comedy, and gave a nod to James Corden's performance. The Academy wasn't singing the same tune, however. No one could ever dress you down. Even with support from Netflix, Where Your Crown couldn't make the Best Original Song shortlist. Ah, well. At least it wasn't the next Cats. How dare you? Don't listen to her! Don't you listen to him! Number three, music. Music is the soothing sound. Music was another two-time Golden Globe nominee. Unlike The Prom, though, this Sia-directed musical starring Kate Hudson wasn't on many radars. The awards website Gold Derby didn't even list the film in its prediction centre. 
As more reviews started to pour in, the film's presence at the Globes became increasingly questionable. Music fell to reach a double-digit score on Rotten Tomatoes, with numerous critics taking issue with what they called a condescending portrayal of autism. Sia actually apologised and said a warning label would be added for certain scenes. I am scared. <sighs> We're all scared of music. Instead of the Oscars, music went from Golden Globes to four Razzie nominations, including Worst Picture, Worst Actress for Hudson, and Worst Director for Sia. Number two, Capone. <laughs> <coughs> Somewhere between Oscar-winning masterpieces like Goodfellas and Razzie-nominated disasters like Gotti, you get a completely forgettable gangster biopic like Capone. No. Oh. While we've seen worse, Capone could have been much better, especially with an actor like Tom Hardy at the forefront. As hard as Hardy tries here, this is one case where he tries too hard. Chewing on a cigar, doing a bizarre voice, and wearing layers of makeup doesn't automatically translate to an Oscar nomination. Tell you what I'd do. I'd take it to five to ten and whoa what? Jesus, you sound like a dying horse. Especially when his makeup made him look less like the real Al Capone and more like a Dick Tracy villain. Of course, Dick Tracy won an Oscar for its makeup, while Capone wasn't even shortlisted. Much like Capone's vault, there was a lot of hype, but nothing worthwhile inside. Was it worth it? Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few dishonorable mentions. Come Away, a mature take on children's stories that can't figure out its target demographic. By day, the children did as they were told. And in the innermost places of their hearts, they worried about what it might mean to grow up. The road's not taken. One Oscar winner, two Oscar nominees, and no nominations. We divorced quite a long time ago now, actually. Divorced? Yes. Probably because I became more successful than you. A lot more, actually. Wendy. Beasts of the Southern Wild meets Peter Pan should be much cooler. Ammonite. Nothing for Kate Winslet, Saoirse Ronan, or even the costumes. That's not what I intended. I want this to be different. Our different. French exit. At least Michelle Pfeiffer got a Golden Globe nomination. Have you heard any rumors regarding my reputation? I heard that you were odd. Well, I'm more than odd. <laughs> There's a goodly part of me that wants to set this building on fire. What do you think of that? Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Rebecca Alfred Hitchcock himself never won a competitive Oscar, but Rebecca stands out as his only film to claim the Academy's top honor, with the award going to its production company. From 2006's All the King's Men to 2016's Ben-Hur, remakes of Best Picture winners rarely live up to their predecessors. While Rebecca isn't the worst example, it's not an exception either. I know that doesn't seem very much to you, but it's a lot to me. Lily James is always a delight, and the film is visually interesting, receiving a BAFTA nomination for its production design. Nevertheless, it lacks the heart of Daphne du Maurier's novel and the gothic thrills of Hitchcock's version. The result is another adaptation that simply didn't need to exist. Is this some kind of joke? Of course not. It, it's the painting. I thought... Go and change. Oh, what, what is it? What have Go I... and change. Netflix might have led the Oscar nominations this year, but any buzz surrounding Rebecca seemed to die out before awards season even got started. In what particular moments in your young life would you bottle? This week now, every minute of it. Never forget it. 
Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.